Hey, it's Eugene Morris with TheBrotherhoodOfGaming.com. You know, it's easy to forget that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild started off as a game for the Wii U. I remember watching Bill play it a few years ago, and I dabbled in it a little bit. But when I finally got my own Nintendo Switch, I knew that eventually I'd have to get the game for myself and give it a try. As much as I wanted to try it, I also admit I was a bit hesitant. Now, if you saw my Link's Awakening review, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of 3D Zelda titles, but this was promising to be something different, something bigger and better. A Zelda game with a huge map where you can literally go anywhere. It was going to be so big and time consuming. So yeah, I was a bit intimidated. So I played the game, I'd beaten it, and I pretty much did everything I wanted to accomplish in it. So, here are my thoughts on it, or let's just say my own personal experience with this very unique game. Here's my review of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So here's the thing about this game. The story is there if you want to find it. To me, the big part of this game is truly the freedom and the options you have in it. But there is a tale to be told here. You start off as Link, awakening in a huge resurrection chamber. You get a Sheikah Slate, you walk outside, and there you go. You are free to go where you want and do whatever you want, but the game does give you a big red flag by pointing you in the direction of this old man. If you choose to follow him, he sets you on a path of completing some objectives that upon completion will lead you to receiving his hand glider. This section is the Great Plateau, and it's pretty much the game's tutorial level. We soon find out that this old man is the spirit of the long-dead King of Hyrule. A hundred years ago, the forces of Hyrule, led by Princess Zelda, was preparing to take on the great evil known as Calamity Ganon. Along with her is her chosen knight protector Link, the four champions of Hyrule, as well as an army of ancient devices known as Guardians and four divine beasts. However, Ganon beat them to the punch, and he used his influence to turn the machines against him. This resulted in the champions being killed, Link mortally wounded, and much of the civilization of Hyrule being devastated. In a last act of heroism, Zelda used herself to seal Ganon at Hyrule Castle, being the only thing to prevent him from completely taking over. Link, meanwhile, was taken to the Shrine of Resurrection, where he spent the last hundred years recuperating. So, here we are now. Link is back in a now post-apocalyptic Hyrule without his memories, and being the last hope to save this land and his princess. The story for what it is feels very epic in nature, yet simple in its approach. Many things are very familiar to many Zelda fans, just expand to a large degree. Unlike many previous entries, this Zelda game does have voice acting, which gives many of the characters in this game much more personality, especially when it comes to Zelda herself and her perfectly executed British accent. It really fits her in my opinion. Unfortunately, this does not extend to Link, who is still a mute like always. I know there is an in-game reason for that, but still I could not help to be disappointed with that. Ultimately, the story has a large scale and a more tragic feel as compared to other Zelda games, but did give me a more triumphant feeling when completing it. Now for the gameplay portion. I feel that one of the main strengths of Breath of the Wild is that no two playthroughs will be completely similar, so I will just tell you how I played it. Now at first, Bill tried to give me a hand by giving me a bunch of DLC when I got started, but I chose not to use them as much as I could because I really wanted this to be my own personal experience as I went through this game. After talking to the King and meeting with Empa, I then focused on finding and activating all the lookout towers. Doing this will unlock portions of the map. Now the thing about me is that I am very regimented, meaning I like to do things in order and complete them before I move on. So here, after finding the towers, I would then focus on finding these shrines, which are Link's main way of powering up. When you locate a shrine and complete it by doing a puzzle or winning combat, you'll be awarded with an orb. Get four and you visit a statue of the goddess of Hyrule and you will be rewarded with either heart or stamina capsule. The hearts are self-explanatory, while the stamina is important as this will allow you to run, fly, and climb certain distances. Yeah, Link has the ability to pretty much climb anything until he reaches the top and his stamina bar runs out. I focused first on obtaining a good amount of stamina which allowed me to get access to pretty much every area in the game. Ironically, however, by sticking to the strategy, I accidentally made the game somewhat boring at first, 
as I was just spending my whole time just wandering around looking for shrines to complete. And there are a ton of them in this game. But after I felt that I got enough in the way of life and stamina, I then turned my attention to freeing the Divine Beasts. This is the main way to visit the different locations in Hyrule, which here are heavily influenced by an element, that being wind, water, earth, and fire. Now they all basically have the same scenario, which is a four-step process. First, you meet a local and he'll help you get a MacGuffin that'll help you immobilize the beast. Two, you get access to said beast. Three, once you're inside, you complete a puzzle. And four, you beat the boss, which is a mini version of Ganon. This part of the game was always a little disappointing for me, as part of the fun in the older Zelda games was taking on the different and unique bosses. In this game, however, they're all pretty much the same, just slight differences. What makes this area's fun, however, is meeting the spirits of the four champions, as they all have unique personalities, and are all likable in their own ways. Well, mostly. These are all optional, but by freeing the Divine Beasts, you can give yourself a big advantage when you face the final boss. After that, I made a beeline to get the Master Sword, the Helion Shield, and it was off to my showdown with Calamity Ganon. Now, there were points where I accomplished other tasks, like helping locals, getting a horse, and finding these little critters to help expand my capacity. Even with all of that, I know that there are tons of other stuff to do in this game. Another thing I liked doing was obtaining and buying outfits that gave my character extra stat buffs. Then I would take them to the dye shop to have them colored to my liking. Hey, gotta look fashionable while saving the world. As you see, I am partial to the hooded look. Now along the way, of course, there are tons of weapons that you can find, from handheld weapons, bows and arrows, and shields, etc. Now, there comes the most controversial aspect of this game, and that's the fact that all these weapons have limited durability, which means if you use them enough, they will break. This even affects the Master Sword to a degree. Now, yes, it is annoying. This did force me to pick and choose my battles to see if the risk was indeed worth the reward. What I would do is I would save my stronger weapons for later challenges. Fortunately, this wasn't much of an issue for me as thankfully there's plenty of weapons in the game, so I never felt like I was fully reduced to just using sticks and leaves. The game just forced me to be more prudent with it. Also, I really wasn't a fan of traveling at night, as I had to deal with those skeleton monsters. That also goes double with dealing with the Blood Red Moon, which increases the enemy's strengths. No, thank you. I'll spend those nights in bed if I can help it. Other helpful items also include the runes. Through the Sheikah Slate, you can access them, which includes bombs for blowing things up, a magnet for metallic objects, creating ice pillars and water, and so on. These are primarily used in the shrines, but they can lend you a much needed hand in many locations throughout the world. One last thing I'd like to mention is all the items that you can scavenge in this game, especially the food. You can take these to a cooking pot and mix and match them to create eating items that can really become lifesavers in a journey. From food that gives you more health, increases defense, speed, resists the heat, cold, etc. I never really paid attention to cooking in previous games, which include those from Tales series. But here, I had a blast, coming up and cooking combinations that would give me an edge against the foes I would meet up against. As far as music go, the game uses kind of a minimalistic approach, meaning that tracks will only kick in at certain moments, which kind of reminded me of games from the classic Tomb Raider series. For example, you can only hear the Zelda theme when you're at Hyrule Castle. This adds to the ambiance of the game for me. The music has this uncanny ability to both be epic and relaxing at the same time. Breath of the Wild can most definitely be a chilled experience, if you let it be. Bill did mention in a previous review that he prefers stylized graphics as opposed to ultra-realistic ones. I can go either way to be honest, but this animation does work for this environment and setting. The landscapes are both rich and beautiful. Hyrule is a true wonder to behold. While I still prefer the look of Link's Awakening, I can't deny that this is a truly beautiful game. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game a buy or sell? A true open world Zelda experience with plenty of options. A familiar formula expanded to an epic degree. An annoying weapon system that you will have to deal with, however. Once I started playing this game, I couldn't put it down. I even put Mario 3D All-Stars aside until I completed this game. And I have no regrets. Breath of the Wild really felt like an experience more than just a game. It is my favorite of the 3D Zelda titles up to this point. It felt like my truly own personalized Zelda adventure. I may find myself returning to Link's Awakening first before Breath of the Wild, that's just my personal taste, 
But as far as I'm concerned, you can't go wrong with either one. You have been watching the Brotherhood of Gaming.com show. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and make sure to visit our store for some cool TBOG merchandise. As always, remember, keep on gaming.